Yes. Welcome to the new video. It's all about the structure of DNA. So there are two scientists, famous scientists, it's called Franklin and Wilkins through X-ray diffraction method actually studied about the structure of DNA. What? Watson and Crick, based on the X-ray diffraction studies made by the Franklin and Wilkins, proposed a double helical model. So actually the Franklin Wilkins studies with the help of X-ray diffraction method on DNA helps Watson and Crick to propose a double helical model. So there are three levels of DNA structure. The first one is, is the primary one. It's just the formation of nucleotide chains by combining uh, sugar, phosphate and nitrogen bases. So a nucleotide simply means what? A sugar, phosphate and nitrogen base combination. So this is called primary structure. So this is, this formation is called the primary levels. And secondary level is the formation of double helix. Actually these two chains are called each other to form a double helix. So this is called the secondary level. So this is the primary level. Both together coin forms double helical structure. This is the secondary level. And third one is the tertiary level is the formation of nucleosomes and chromatin. It simply means much more coiled the forms. Actually, the chromosomes and chromatins are this is look like the tertiary formation. So three levels: primary, secondary, tertiary levels of DNA formations. And what actually the DNA double helical model proposed by Watson and Crick at Zook. So it simply means what is a spiral ladder. Look like a spiral ladder or a or a winding staircase. Look like a staircase. There are two complementary anti-parallel polypeptide chains are there. So this is one chain and this is another chain. And why they are called anti-parallel? Because the direction is different. Here it is three dash n. One is the first carbon atom, sugar and the first carbon atom, atom, first, second and third. So this is the three dash n and this is the fifth carbon, five dash n. Opposite. Here it is one, two, three, three dash and here it is five dash. So they are in the opposite direction, hence called a two complementary antiparallel polypeptide chains are there. Tissue around a common axis like this. This tissue around, around it forms a double helix like this. Tissue around a common axis in the form of a right hand double helix. This structure actually called the B DNA. So actually the Watson Crick proposed the structure, DNA structure, which is actually known as the B type of DNA. There are different types of DNA. Z DNA is there, C DNA is there, A DNA is there. Actually, Watson and Crick proposed the B DNA structure. That is a common DNA present in the all new all cells. And how do these chains are stabilized? These two chains, nucleotide chains, are stabilized by interchange hydrogen bond between adjacent pairs. You can see the nucleo nitrogen bases are here. This is adenine, guanine, thymine, cytosine other. In that, the purine always pairs with pyrimidine. Purine always pairs with the pyrimidine. So this uh, hydrogen bond between purine and pyrimidine is actually the backbone or the, that gives the strength to the DNA structure. Chains are anti parallel, one 3 dash to 5 dash, another 5 dash to 3 dash directions already set. The sugar and phosphate. So, this is a sugar, this is phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar. So, this forms the backbone. Phosphate, sugar, phosphate. So, this forms the backbone of the DNA chain, the two sides. One side here, one is other side here. They link through phosphodiester bond. So this is a phosphate and this is a ester bond here. One bond is here. One is attached to 5 dash, the other is attached to 3 dash. There's one, two, three, third carbon atom. Here it is the fifth carbon atom. So there are two ester bond. One is here and one is here. So linked through phosphate. Hence it is called a phosphodiester bond. So the adjacent nucleotide chain are linked through what? It's a phosphodiester bond. So this is a phosphodiester bond. This is another one. This is another one. Same as here. 
The nitrogen bases are arranged perpendicular to the long axis of the chains. So these are arranged perpendicular to the the two uh, nitrogen bases are the nitrogen bases are arranged perpendicularly. So each base linked with the deoxyribose through glycosidic bond. So this base, whether it is purine or pyrimidine, is linked with the deoxyribose through a glycosidic bond. So there is a non-specific hydrophobic stacking interaction between adjacent base pairs to place the DNA double helix. So these base pairs are arranged so amazingly, so they are stacking each other one above the other. So that actually stabilizes the DNA in a compact manner. So this stacking and this coiling produces two grooves. So this is a group, a major deep group. So this is a major group. So this is between two successive turns. One turn means what? From here to here. This distance. This distance is called one turn. This is another turn. So major grooves are seen between two successive turns. One turn is here. This is another turn. So in between there is a curry. So this is called a major group. And between the two strands, this is one strand, this is another strand. This is one strand, this is opposite. So there forms a small group, this is called minor group. So there are two strands, so there are two helical groups are there, major groups and minor groups. And what is the damage between the two adjacent chains? There are 20 damage, angstrom diameter is there. So 20 angstrom between two chains are there. Diameter of the DNA is 20 angstroms. This one base pair, this is another base pair, the distance between is what 3.4 angstrom. 3.4 angstrom between adjacent base pairs. And length of one turn is about what 34 angstrom. 34 angstrom. One turn is about 34 angstrom or 3.4 nanometer. Okay. So actually in this 3.4 nanometer or 34 angstrom, 34 angstrom length, you can see 10.5 base pairs. 10.5 base pairs are seen. 4 angstrom length of 1 turn of DNA, there will be 10.5 base, 10.5 base pairs. Other. There is this important rules, there is a chart of rules. As already said, pure in Norway space with the time. Pyrimidine. In that case, adenine always pairs with the thymine. And so, same, thymine always pairs with the adenine with the two hydrogen bonds. Guanine always pairs with the cytosine, or cytosine always pairs with the guanine with the three hydrogen bonds. So, if there are two adenine, there will be two thymine. If there are three guanine, there will be three cytosine. So A plus B is A plus G is equal to C plus T like this. Or A plus G, if A is 2, G is 3, A plus 3 is A plus G is equal to 5 divided by if G is 3, C will be 3. If A is 2, T is 2. So 5 by 5 is equal to 1. So if A is 2, T is 2, G is 2, 3 is 2, same. So A, A, is equal to A is equal to T and G is equal to C. Or it can be written as A by T is equal to G by C is equal to 1. So this is called what? Charkov's. The percentage of A is equal to always equal to the percentage of T in a DNA structure. And the percentage of G is always equal to the percentage of C. Got it? So this is the structure of DNA proposed by Watson and Crick. So there is a problem. So if the GC content, guanine cytosine content of a DNA molecule is 60 percentage, 
What are the percentage of the four other bases? Guanine, cytosine, T, thymine, and adenine. So GC kind of means this is the GC. If 60 percentage, what will be the percentage of TA? It will be 40 percentage. 60 plus 40. That means if there are 30 guanine is there, there will be 30, 30, 30 cytosine will be there. So what, will, what is the total content of TA? It's 40 percentage. So T, how many TA, T will be there, thymine will be there? It's 20. RNA will be 20 percent. So what is the correct answer? G is equal to 30, C is equal to 30, A is equal to 30, 20 and T is equal to 20 percentage.